Hi, Thomas here. Uh, so basically, after my last video showing uh, the 3D printout done and removed, I went into the software part and installed this, the, the printer into the uh, Windows operating system. So I just wanted to show very quick steps how to uh, put a 3D object into the software and generate the G-code file. Uh, so what I did for the first time, I opened this software that is called Repeat Tire or Repeat Your Host um, that is suggested by um, the vendor of this do-it-yourself printers. And I opened the, um, the G-code file that was used. So that was the PLR, okay. And basic, basically we can see the, the object in the center part here. We can move and uh, um, use it. Um, if we open the G-code file, we actually can see the G-code. So in section print preview, edit G-code, we can see that's the result. Um, uh, well, that's the actual uh, G-code file with the result of the um, sliced 3D model from the previous section we can see the visualization so uh, when we select the show travel moves we can see the, the extra lines that are moves of the printer but if we select the show layer range then we can just go layer by layer and this shows how the printer head will move and if we select um, from the first to the last layer we can basically see the whole shape uh, so since i discovered it i found um, that quite useful if we see the moves of course for each layer um, they are marked with the special blue lines these moves are basically um, head moves to the new work position at certain uh, layer. Um, the usage of the of this um, software. So this one is to rotate. Um, this zooms to object, so we can still rotate it again. And then we have different views or projections um, so if I go to this one well, maybe that's even better we can see one by one how the structure um, is done during the printout so my next actually step was how to do a um, printout from a model so this software actually has a special tab which is the first one here called object placement if we go here and we load or use the plus button here add object we can load some stl file and this file actually is a 3d model so for example we try to print a turtle and uh, then we have a head of the turtle but we can load more objects. The turtle was having uh, four parts to be printed. So on one part we did a head and bottom of it and also some clips. So that was basically moved to print it on one filament one color of filament and then if we go to the next part we can use the slicer um, but to use slicer we need the printer to be configured in the software uh, the first step is actually configuration in the windows operating system So it's probably more noisy now since the printer is running, but if we go to our uh, management tool, device manager, um, we should see the printer installed here 
um, with having the serial converter device and also the COM port uh, because basically we need a COM port, virtual COM port over USB uh, to communicate with the printer. If these devices are running and not having any uh, exclamation marks here, then your printer um, is correctly configured. So when the configuration in the operating system is finished, um, we should be able to connect to the printer. And generally, um, one important thing is the printer settings here. So basically we need the COM port and, um, to be available. Um, then by going one by one, we declare the extruder and hotbed temperature as suggested per, by manufacturer. And also what is important, the printer shape, which is uh, bed size um, and offsets for a bed. And basically when this is configured, we can store this parameter as default parameters. And for and then we can select the slicer. So the slicer is a software that actually um, does the slicing for the printer and produces the G-codes. So for slicer, um, there are further steps required. So in configuration here, that has to be done for the first time, I believe. There are certain windows and one by clicking one by one of them, over the print settings, we have, the, for example, the layer height, um, the infill position, the fill density options here. Um, what else? We have the filament configuration. So basically, we have the diameter of our filament, the color. Um, more important is the cooling. So we need the, the fan always to be on. And on the last one for the printer, uh, I think we have the COM port settings and board rate. So number of extruders and also the bed shape. So this is defining the um, physical dimension of our uh, printer. Most of them I just configured as suggested um, by vendor and I stored my, and then each configuration using the save button here and my name and a printer name, you know. So after that, we can actually select each of this configuration here. So I already did another set for just PLA material so I can access it easily. And when all these settings are done, we just start the slicing as you can see now by it, it takes, depends probably from the size of the um, uh, 3D models, it will take a while. But when this is done, it just jumps to preview session that I was presented. So first thing we can see, we can see in G-Code editor, we have a new code and that's the code we want to use for printout. And then, um, of course, um, we can also see how our visualization will look like. So by going layer by layer, we basically see the printout. Then we can see the moves. It's much more complex with the moves for these three or four models. Of course, we need to recalibrate fill, uh, our printer. Uh, before we start and there are two ways to print it actually so one way is um, by saving this um, uh, for sd print which we can do it from here or from there we can just save it and we um, type in the name G-code 
we just save it here and uh, we just need to copy this uh, um, generated G code file to SD card using Windows operating system or there is a part called SD card so probably um, we can use this one uh, but I, I, I copied it manually to SD card for the first time the other method is by connecting the printer uh, directly and with this method is actually less safe I found it that it's better to, to move it via SD card especially for a bigger print uh, because I had a situation where I just started direct print from uh, a printer connected via USB and uh, when I went for some drink uh, my computer went to sleep mode and uh, basically printing had stopped when it was waking up so I recommend to go by SD card printing but for a small parts that don't take much time I think it is doable by using the um, direct printing from the software uh, so there are few more or there is one more tab because we basically go from object placement through the slicer we need to configure the printer and then um, the settings uh, when we slice we can see the preview and also we can see the g-code codes generated we can save it and then there is also manual control section so this gives us more fast access actually to uh, to our uh, printer and uh, to show how it works I need to power up the printer so definitely we will have some noise in the back I'm sorry for that and uh, when the printer is ready we can connect to that so um, first of all we can control the, the the movements of the printer so for example we can move the bed and it's just responds immediately to that same with the uh, z-ax we can move up left and right um, so and um, for the z-ax as well uh, for the x-ax uh, uh, but we can also initiate the homing for each axe or generic for all axes and uh, there are some scripts I actually found these buttons very useful because um, we can initiate some commands but if we right click we can store here an extra command just to go into some let's say uh, calibration position so I'm planning to, to put here a command that will be moving the bed to uh, uh, to first let's say position here for second position here and third and fourth so the calibration will be much easier just by using this tool the sliders here are um, the to control the fan heat bed and uh, extruder temperatures the set point is here so it's 55 we can see the bed since I enabled it just a while ago starts heating and also extruder starts heating so this is the current value shown here and this is the set point currently that is entered here uh, the flow rate and feed rate I never use that we can probably control the extruder um, with these two things uh, also power button didn't work um, so the software is more generic for more printers from different manufacturers probably but actually it, it, it allows to um, to use that uh, so if we go with our let's say printout that we have in the preview at the moment 
So if we go with that and we press the print, or from here or from there, uh, then it will go basically to um, composition first, then it will um, start the heating, so we are almost there actually. Um, and we can see and here <laughs> how the printout is being started. So it shows the commands being sent and for more technical guys um, you can actually observe it more precisely using the log feature here so if we enable the log uh, we can see the G codes going into the printer uh, actually we should see the echo and enable the commands to see them uh, but it may be too much of them if we just enable all but that's it I mean we can observe how the printer is working and how each layer is done which may be quite interesting for the beginning not necessarily for later on uh, of course the 3d models uh, the 3d models uh, they, they recommend to get them from uh, uh, from internet sites and you can basically do them by 3D modeling software so uh, what is important is that for this software for slicing the 3D model has to be saved in the STL uh, file and only the STL file can be sliced and uh, the result is obviously the G code um, all right so we can currently see the printout being done and there is also a gradient of uh, uh, the color gradient of uh, different speeds shown so the faster printer goes uh, I think the different the color scale or maybe I'm wrong probably it was described somewhere here yeah but I think uh, that's all for this part um, I've done some movie of this printout uh, with a camera earlier on when I actually printed the the title. All right, I think that's it for today. Uh, I'm not planning any further videos, but uh, if you think something may be necessary or some more clarification may be needed, please put a comment and uh, I will try to look at it uh, in some spare time. That I sometimes have. Alright, thank you. Bye.